These are the plaintiffs, Nikita and Vincent Macaroni. Nikita says they hired the defendant to dog sit for them. And when they went on vacation, the careless woman let their poor dog jump out the window to his death. When they arrived at the defendant's apartment, their dog was still on the street dead. They called the cops in hysterics, and this woman has to pay for her outrageous behavior. They're suing for $8,000, the amount they're owed. This is the defendant, Cat. She says she left the dog in her apartment for 20 minutes, and when she came back, she noticed her screen was broken. When she looked outside, she was horrified to see the plaintiff's dog on the street dead. The poor thing broke out and jumped. The plaintiffs left him on the street for three days before she finally hired someone to take him away, and she's been traumatized. She is accused of negligence. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $8,000 for defamation of character and emotional distress. All parties, please raise your right hand. The People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Williams is presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Macaroni, you are suing Ms. Cat for $8,000 because according to you, she is responsible for the death of your pet. She's counterclaiming against you the same amount, which is the statutory maximum in Miami, because according to her, you have defamed her all over the internet. Talk to me and tell me what happened. All right, so every summer before we do our summer camp, my husband and I like to go on a trip. We were in Miami, and I had my service dog, well, he's in training, and my husband got him for me for Mother's Day. What kind of dog is it? He was a Welsh Springer Spaniel, so he's okay. pretty rare. Like, they only breed, like, less than 300 a year. When you say he's in training as a service dog, how's that? So, when you train a service dog, because I use a walker and a cane sometimes because I have degenerative disc disease, so two of the vertebrates or the discs in my back are completely crushed, so it's a lot of pain sometimes. So. Honestly, he would help me pull pull me out of bed. Like we were training him stuff, helping me with my walker, um, with my cane, anything like that. So, now I was training him. We only had him for about a month. But how big is a Welsh Spaniel? He was about 25, 30 pounds when we got him. What's the name of the dog? His name was Nipsey. All right, tell me about the night that this happens. Go ahead. So the night it happened. We had had him staying at the Airbnb. We'd put him in the crate, no problem. But the night before, we went out, and the people next to us were like, you know, he was barking a lot at night, and we couldn't really get too much sleep. So we were like, okay, well, we're not going to be jerks. We're going to try and find, you know, a, a boarding place or something like that, because it is Airbnb, so we have to be considerate of the other people that are renting and that obviously live there, too. But anyway, so we went to dinner that night before we had dropped Nipsey off at her house around, like, 3 or How'd four. you find her? He actually found her How'd on Google. How'd you find her? Yeah, so after having the talk with the neighbor, I was like figuring out a place to put the dog so we can go out again the next night, keep our vacation moving. Right. So I got on Google, looked up like boarding facilities, and she popped up on there. Okay, but she's not a boarding facility. She's like a pet sitter, right? Pet sitter, yeah. And how much were you going to pay her to watch the dog? So I have text messages that says she charges $100 a night. Okay. So you take the puppy over there at what time? Between 3 and 4 p.m. And when you go there, do you go into the house? No, so it's like all the places in Miami, especially the apartments, they're pretty much gated. So we called her, she came down, she opened the gate, we were talking to her, and then we gave her Nipsey. And she, I think she had like another dog already with her on a leash and stuff. So I mean, you know, she didn't come off like, it wasn't what she was supposed to be doing. Like, it wasn't her job. You know, like, she was suited and booted for it. She had another animal. So I was like, she had good reviews on Google. So we thought she was legit. All right, so you leave Nipsey with her, yeah. and then what happens? And then we were finishing dinner around probably like 8, 8.30, something like that. And as soon as we got back to the place, he gets a phone call from her, and she's like, I'm sorry, I can't find your dog. And All right, tell me about it. You're yeah, the one who got the yeah, phone Yeah, she calls me, um, yeah, I have a problem. Um, I can't find your dog. So um, what do you mean you can't find our dog? You're supposed to be watching the dog. No, we can't find a dog. Okay, we'll be there in a second. So we take our bikes, ride them up to her place real quick. It sounds like 9 o'clock or whatever. 
um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I can't find your dog. So I start running around the building to look. Yeah, calling the dog saying, Nipsey, Nipsey, right. Nipsey. She Come didn't in. even want to let us in at first, right? She yeah. was kind of like, yeah. didn't want to let us in. We had to call her. She took a while to come down. Finally, she opened the gate and we walk in and we're like, where's the dog? She's like, I don't know. I went to dinner. When I came back, he was gone. I'm like, okay, well, why did you leave him when you went to dinner? You're supposed to be watching my dog. He's a puppy in the first place. We paid you to watch him. So why would you leave him when you went to dinner? And show me where he got out of, okay? So my husband starts going to look because I'm like asking her, okay, if he jumped, where did he jump from? And she's like, he jumped out of my window. I'm like, okay, but where? Like, show me where he jumped from. She said, the second floor. I said, what do you mean the second floor? What do you mean? Like, show me where he jumped from right now. And as I'm saying that, he's literally down about 100 feet, mm -hmm. maybe 100 feet, and he's like, babe, he's over here, and he's dead. Um, covered with a blanket. Covered with a sheet. Already. Bloodied. So I go running down there, and from the size, I could tell it was Nipsey, and I Holy pulled the sheet, and he was splattered on the ground. Eyes splattered out, blood, brains on the ground, done, okay? So she starts running. So we're sitting there crying. And I'm like, no, we can't let her leave. So we go and walk. And she's like going around to the other side of the complex. And we're basically, I'm yelling and screaming at her, you need to call the police. Oh, I already tried. What do you mean you tried? Call the police again. So I called the police. And I finally get a hold of them. And then about 20 or 30 minutes later, the police finally show up. And there's like three cops. And I'm trying to tell them what happened. And I just, I, I couldn't. I was just still in tears. And they're talking to me. And they so they're talking, talking to, me. to so basically, him. You can read the police report. They, she was not trying to let these cops in the apartment. She wasn't trying to even like tell them her name. Which apartment still number she even, was in, but, nothing. So the police finally get in, do their thing, whatever they do in there. And they come back out to me and they tell me, you know, it's unfortunate, but... The, the, the window was left, the window's open. There's a screen that's bent out. There's an there's a ottoman right by the window. Miss Cat, what happened that night? The whole story is the job of the dog in morning around 11, 30 a.m. to my place. And I go down to take the dog. And they tell me nothing about the dog. And they tell me nothing about uh, well, What did you want them to tell you? What do you mean? They never say I can't leave the dog alone. The well, dog I mean, have anxiety, and it's not a crime to leave a dog alone because I'm a... No, no, no. It's, we're not talking about whether it's a crime because uh -uh. you're not charged with a crime. This isn't criminal court. Do you do this for a living? Do you do you watch dogs? Yes, I You get paid dogs. to do that, right? But they didn't pay anything. Uh, that's not my question because okay. the dog was dead, so they didn't have a chance to pay you or they weren't going to pay you once the dog was dead. Okay, so, but my question is, were they supposed to pay you? If everything had gone That's fine, you would... That's what we agree on, yes. Yes. Okay, do you have the police report? Yes, ma'am, I do. Can I have it? Absolutely. Is this it right here? Mm-hmm. Why did you leave the dog alone? So that day, I have two other dogs. They need to deliver back home around 7.30. Why didn't you just take their dog with you on a walk instead of leaving the dog that you don't know in a strange place alone with a window open? The window is shut and the screen is intact. How did the dog open a window? And then my neighbor... How did the dog open a window? I don't know. I'm not in the house. Right, which is kind of the point, right? You're being paid to watch a dog and you leave the dog alone and you're, you're saying, oh, no, 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 the window was closed. The dog must have opened the window. I'd like to understand how you think the dog opened the window. It's a slide window. Yes, I know it's a slide. I don't think the dog knows it's a slide. That's my point. It's a dog and it's a puppy. So I think you left the window open. I know from the police report that, in fact, the, no, the okay. screen was damaged. That I think a dog could do when a dog is saying, where the hell am I? And how are there no humans? And there's an ottoman in front of the window. And then the dog gets up and the dog sees that there's humanity down there. And then the dog might, you know, hit the screen. That I do believe. But I kind of think you probably left the window open when you left the dog unattended that you were being paid to attend. Objection. What happened with the dog after that night? That after the... night, I, I call them and then I bring them. I pull open the gate and then I bring them and lead them and corner the dog. And then when she see the dog, she's very emotional and charge at me and trying to attempt attack me. 
And then what I do you mean by trying to attack you? Okay, she charged at me like 20 miles per hour, and then I don't know what she attempted to do, and then I run away. I don't want personal conflict. I don't want she get hurt or I get hurt. Okay, so after the police leave, and after they leave, the dog remains there on the Three premises. Days. Three days. And then the apartment people are trying to throw the dog in trash, and then I feel very bad for the dog, and then I say, no, please, don't move the dog to trash. He already very sad, and then I The dog is sad, the dog is dead. No, he's dead. I feel sad and okay. bad for the dog. Okay. I don't want him to end up in a trash can. Right, so what do you do? So I pay the animal removers to bring the dog to the hospital to cremate it. Okay, and then what do you do with the ashes? And then I send them back the dog ashes to to Her them, house. to their house. Yeah. Is, did you end up with the dog ashes? So, yes, Your Honor. She said she sent me the ashes. Right, the, and this, you're saying you paid for the ashes. Yes, yeah. ma'am. With This okay. is the $250 charge for okay. veterinary services, which is the cremation. Okay. okay, And then on the 10th... Let's talk about what happens afterwards. You you end up, um, you've got a jihad going that where you want you want to make sure that this doesn't happen to any other person. So you are you are going to every website in town and you're posting things uh, on on what on her site on no. how does it work so i was on my own facebook i went to miami beach animal advocates posted a a post in there i posted on google i posted on on yelp i posted on all those places and people were commenting 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 coming okay. i never once commented at her Nothing like what that. What do you mean commented at her? What like, do you mean um, like I never posted her name and like tagged her or anything. I don't like... know what you're talking about. You mention her specifically yeah. and yeah, say, and don't a... use her. She killed my dog. Yeah, I, mean... I use her business name. Yeah. Though. Yeah. And people were saying things like, oh, I see her drumming up business at all the dog parks in Miami Beach. I'm so glad you told me that. This goes on. How does, does she, I guess you start to realize that someone is, is saying all these things about you on the internet, how do you end up realizing that? So a couple of my friends text me and say, hey, you're being attacked online. And then I just open my Yelp and, and she just tagged me on Instagram and Facebook and Facebook. Group. And what was she saying? She said, I'm a killer. And she put a red letter on my name, say I'm a killer. On your advertisement, she put, she wrote the word killer. And then posts on social media. Welcome back to the People's Court. I'm Harvey Levin. Uh, the defendant says the plaintiffs left their dead dog on the sidewalk for days, and ultimately the defendant had to remove it. But the plaintiffs say the careless woman left their dog alone in a second-story apartment with an ottoman next to an open window, and she's a dog killer. Let's go back into the courtroom. Did you end up going to court to get her to stop? Yes. What did I, you, you applied for what, a restraining order? Um, injunction to ask her stop defaming me online. Okay. And also she blackmailed me 5,000 on my text message. What do you mean by blackmailed you? I say stop all your defamation. I didn't kill your dog and stop asking me for more money. And then she Okay, but let me when you say more money, you know, can I ask you a question? Did you ever pay for the value of the dog? No, um, right? No, but I spent money on the dog. How much afterwards. money did you spend on the dog? Including funeral, cleaning and deliver. You had a funeral for the dog? Yes. What does that mean? So the dog passed away. I I hire people to give him a funeral to... I don't understand. To... Like, what do you mean by you hired people to give him a funeral? Like, in it's my a head, a funeral ceremony. is a ceremony. It's a ceremony. So you had a ceremony for the dog? Yes. Did you invite them? Jesus Christ. Um, I didn't invite them, but I do How much ask money the did you funeral spend? people to mail them the ashes afterward, okay. and I have a rainbow card for the prayers and all okay. their servers. All right, but did you ever package. pay them for the dog? I say, um, do you want to adopt a new dog? Well, they don't want you to pick out a dog for them. 
I mean, I don't know what that means. They want you to pay the value of the dog that died in your care because it wasn't in your care. You have a lawsuit against them for defamation. So let's talk about what happens. You, you file an injunction to get them to stop talking bad about you on the internet. And what happens to the injunction in court? The judge said if she keep doing it, she might end up being in jail. And I, she really? Because I, I read the file. I thought that that got denied. Didn't that get denied? Yes. It Okay, that denied. means you lost the, mo the injunction. That doesn't mean you won. That yeah, means you denied. lost. Four times. It Four was, times? It was denied each time, and then the last one was granted per hearing, and that was the one we had over Zoom, and that one got dismissed as well. Right, so it was always denied. Yes, ma Right, okay. So after all of the motions for rehearing, you file for an, an actual protective order saying she threatened to kill you? Yes. Okay. How did she threaten to kill you? When did, when did that happen? The night after I showed them where the dog is, and then she, Nikki, she charged at me and cursed at me very yow and say, oh, I'm going to make my life hell and need to be careful. And so all kinds of this cursing is a lot of foul language I don't want to say. She is now suing you for defamation because she says you made up this thing about her threatening to kill you. Do you have any evidence to support what you're saying? Any witnesses? You had neighbors down there and stuff. Any neighbors hear that? That she said she was going to kill you? I have an affidavit. That says that they heard her say she was going to kill you? What are the apartment damages you're suing for? According to you, you have $1,700 in apartment damages. Can you explain that to me, Ms. Cat? That's how much the landlord took. Okay, took what, out of the security deposit? Yes. Okay, so your landlord keeps your security deposit and you want them to pay you? Because your landlord kept the security deposit because you were running a business out of, out of the apartment that you, do, you don't even have a lease on. So yeah, that's what happened. You ended up evicted from there, right? It's not me being evicted. It's... No, it's worse. Well, it's you or any, it's, it's, it's the person on the lease plus anybody living there. You're living there, right? No. You weren't living there? I visit there because I dog sitting. So you're dog sitting in someone else's apartment, but you have another place to live? Yes. Why don't you just take care of the dogs where you live? I go to visit my friend, right? I don't believe a word coming out of your mouth. I just don't. I live like a five What's the five cleaning walk? fee of $500? I pay the cleaning company to clean because of Apartment. To clean what? To clean the scene. Outside? Yes, because... Can I see the receipt for $500 to clean the, where the dog is? While she's looking for that, I think I understand your defamation case. The emotional distress, loss of a service dog, pain and suffering, tell me about that. I mean, it's been a lot. Like, I literally cried every day for, what? Probably three weeks because of all the just trauma from witnessing my puppy on the, on the ground. How much did you folks pay for the puppy? We paid 2500 for him. And Do then you have a receipt for the puppy? I have this from my um, breeder. All right, folks. Let's talk about your lawsuit first. You have a lawsuit against her for replacement value of the puppy, saying it's $5,000 to replace. And you're including things like training the puppy and other things like that. Your measure of damages in court, first of all, let me just say, I am so sorry for your loss. Thank you. It's really hard, and you're on a vacation, and you're tra you didn't do anything wrong. You know, you went on the internet, she had good reviews, and so you left your dog with her. What could go wrong? This could go wrong. Mm -hmm. This could go wrong, right? And um, so, it's a very unusual. This isn't usually what happens, but this is what happened to you, and I'm very sorry that it happened to you. The measure of damages when you come to court is the value of the property at the time of the bad. Mm -hmm. So you have to prove two things. One, the defendant wronged you, and two, this is the value of the, <clears throat> of the property. Mm -hmm. And I know we love our dogs like they're our children, but they're not, they're not humans, they're dogs. And dogs under the eyes of the law are considered property. It's the value that you paid for the dog, which is $2,500. Not the vaccines after, not the training after, just the value of the dog. And we'll put a pin in it right now, your defamation case.
Let's put a pin in it a moment. So now you have a counterclaim against her, $8,000. Let's talk about your counterclaim against her. It's because of all the things that she was posting online, like killer and all this other stuff that she says. That's your defamation case, right? She say I kill her dog. Right. Well, did you kill her dog? No, absolutely not. Okay. What is your feeling about what the word kill means? Kill means intentional. It doesn't. Okay, there are many, many forms of killing that are, that are not intentional. I could have a car accident, I killed you, but I, I didn't mean to kill you, um, but you're, you're dead. Kill means to cause the death. So what did she do wrong by saying that you killed her dog? She immediately said the dog jumped out a window. She didn't say, she put her arms around my dog's neck and strangled it. She didn't say that. She said exactly what happened. You're paid to watch a dog. Mm -hmm. You leave the dog alone. I don't I believe you when paid. you say it's 20 minutes. I don't it's believe you when you minutes. say the window was closed. Not even your apartment. How do you know the window's open or closed? Now it's like, ah, I just use it to dog sip. You know, it's very cagey, Ms. Cat. Very cagey, all of it. Um, I'm ruling in favor of the plaintiff in this case for the $2,500, which was the cost of the dog. I am also ruling in favor of the plaintiff for another 1000 for the defamation, saying she told me she was going to kill me, which I don't think happened. And I am ruling against you on your lawsuit against them for everything that you're suing them for, which makes no sense to me. Do you even feel bad that this happened? Yes, I feel Do bad. You? All right. My verdict in this case is for the plaintiffs. Thank you. So in this tragic case involving the death of a dog, the plaintiffs prevail. Fender does not get anything for her countersuit. Kat, let me talk to you for a moment. What's your feeling about the outcome of the case? I'm glad they get what they want, and it's, it's a tragedy. So I don't do anything wrong. You know, the judge disagrees. You did do something wrong. You didn't watch the puppy. All right, let's talk to the plaintiffs now. Uh, obviously, a very tragic experience for them. And I'm so sorry for you, just as the judge said. Uh, but are you, are you satisfied with the judge's verdict? Yeah, I mean, as long as it's finished, everybody knows she's a bad person. Don't leave her with your animals. And, you know, I'm happy. All right. Sorry for your loss, but uh, congratulations for winning your lawsuit and good luck in the future. Thanks. Okay? Doug, it, what really just bugs me about the law in a situation like this is dogs are considered property. Um, they are not considered living beings under the law in most states. And that means you almost value the dog like you would a sofa, which makes absolutely no sense. You can't get pain and suffering from what a dog endures. Um, and, you know, I think the law is going to be changing in this area because it should. Did you make your kids do household chores? Well, did I? You were there. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, occasionally. I remember I was the strong taskmaster. And oh, you were yeah, right, <laughs> right. But, um, uh, yeah, we made them do some things. Right. Um, you it was know, hard enough to get them to clean their stinking room. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, yeah. And pick up after themselves. And pick up but, after themselves. But, uh, at one point, I had a system which I thought worked really well where um, rather than, I decided to, to you were fill a jar. Deducting from there. Do you remember? From their we allowances. filled a jar with quarters. Right. And they, they were like maybe, I don't know, six, right. eight or so. I, 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 we filled a jar with quarters. And if they left their underwear on the floor, I'd take a quarter That's out. Because right. I wanted them to feel it right. like they were losing. Right. Well, that was really effective. We did that for like six, <laughs> seven months. I don't know why. It worked for a while. It did. It worked it did, for yeah, a while. Because they were getting the message. What about you when you were a kid? Did you have to do a lot of household chores? Or I, you know, I did some. I mean, I, I, I uh, it's not like I was Cinderella or anything. Right. Um, Scrubbing the floors. You know, my, uh, we we always had the idea that our kids' job was to study hard and get good grades. And right. But we you mean at your house growing up or in our house? No, I mean our house. Yeah, I, I my totally parents' agree. idea. My, like, right. uh, that generation was like, don't, don't bother we me. We were <laughs> on them to do well academically. Right. We were more we than were, and, else. and very hard. And they were in yeah. sports and they were in a thousand things. So it's right. not as though I had them scrubbing toilets. No, no I did no. not because I, I I didn't need to have them scrubbing toilets. Right. I needed to have them uh, excel. What I wanted for my right. kids was that was you know, priority one. Right. Priority one right. was to make sure they got the At, grades. When I was a kid, I had to. To mow the lawn, yeah. I'd take out the garbage. Had to. My dad would bring me the shovel and go, "You got poo patrol," and he'd hand it to me because I had to clean up after the, our German shepherd. Well, poo patrol's on your list. Yeah, I know, I know. That's I still. At I our still house. No, you're actually very, very yeah. good at it. I have right. to say.